Okay, so I'm uh, I'm Jordan Tagani. I'm a um, software engineer working on on BigQuery. Um, it's BigQuery uh, is a, a tool for for data analysis, similar to MapReduce is a tool for for data processing. Um, it's based on some internal tools that we built um, over the years at at Google. And so before I get too far into what what BigQuery is, um, I just want to talk for a second about you know what what is big data. Um, I assume that since uh, since we're at a big data conference, everybody has some idea of what big data is. But I think one of the things that I found is that for everybody has a different opinion of what of what big data means. Uh, at Go at Google, you know we've got um, you know Gmail users in the hundreds of millions. Um, the metadata about those users. Uh, their emails, et cetera. I mean, that's a lot. That's a lot of data, and we sort of tend to talk about, okay, it's starting to get big when you have a billion rows or when you have a terabyte of data. For other people, it's it means something different. If you're doing machine learning uh, and you've got a million rows, you may, you know, that may be uh, that may be big data. That may be more more data than you can handle. So, I think big data is not really just about about the size of the data that you have. It's more about do you have a problem with your data? Do you have a problem uh, scaling? Is your is your uh, is your architecture working with the with the size of data that you have? Um, and so, uh, you know, I think of big data also as 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 problems. And so, you might have a big data problem if, for example, you have data coming in faster than you can you can process it. You may have 10 gigabytes, 10 megabytes of data. Um, but it's coming in so fast that you can't you can't write it out to your to your data store fast enough, um, or you know conversely uh, or in a re related related way, if if you're growing 10% a week, you may only have a small amount of data now, but you want to plan for when you are two to three orders of magnitude larger. Maybe you are waiting to sign a big customer, and they're going to you know use. Um, you know, cause you to go up by two orders of magnitude the amount of the amount of data you're processing. That's still a big data problem. Um, or sometimes just data architectures make it hard to scale. Uh, you know, if you have a, a single monolithic database that you're relying on for all your all your your analysis, um, it's it can be difficult to 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 shard that into multiple pieces. And if you shard it into multiple pieces, then you can't do the same joins that you were that you had been doing before. Um, so uh, you know, architecture is very closely tied to to, uh, to to big data and what what big data means. Sometimes it's just a question of cost. You know, if you uh, if you've got a MySQL instance or if you've got a SQL Server instance, and you need twice the capacity, you might have to go away from commodity hardware and you might have to buy some big iron machine and and your cost will go up by by 10x. And the cost could be cost of physical machines, cost of developer time, cost of cloud time, etc. Um, and I think one of the big the goals of big data is that when you is that cost should be proportional. If you double your data size, you want to roughly double double your cost. Uh, you don't want to have to go up go up 10x or come up with a different architecture. Um, and you know you think about sort of the old the old model where you had a single server and all your data lived on that server and you were querying on that server and that was your database server, etc. You know, clearly that has that has has some scaling limitations, and sort of the big data era is the era of you've got giant data centers with commodity machines. Um, you want to be able to just plug in a new machine, plug in you know an additional node when um, when when you, when your data size increases, and maybe you're physically doing it, or maybe you're you're doing it via uh, you know some some sort of cloud offering. Um, so big data, I think. Is about scaling out and not not scaling up. So for Google, from a very early uh, very early on, we recognized the the need to, to to scale out, and all of our algorithms and architectures are are essentially scale out architectures. The the the, the founders and the initial people at Google they didn't want to buy a million dollar database machine. They wanted to buy twenty five thousand dollar database machines and you figure out in software how you can make the the 20 inexpensive machines act like your your million dollar um, your million dollar machine because 
then when you go from, then when you need to scale again, you don't want to have to buy a $10 million machine. You can just buy, <laughs> buy more of these commodity machines. Um, and just to give an idea of just some of the scale that we have, you know, Google, um, Google gets 72 hours of YouTube videos every minute. Um, and the, the, the Google search index is, uh, um, as of a couple of years ago, uh, the caffeine search index is 100 million gigabytes. That's, that's a lot of data. Um, if you're doing um, analysis, you know, you're not going to be able to process that on a single machine, uh, no matter how big that machine is. Um, and so BigQuery, the, the product that I, that, I, that I like to talk about, it's sort of and it's based on the internal tool called Dremel, and it came out of a need, came out of a big data problem, where we had a lot of data, and we wanted to be able to ask questions of the data. And some of those questions, you know, maybe this is the same question we ask every day. It's like, how, how are things changing? Um, but maybe it's a question we've never at, wanted to ask before, like, you know, is our, is our product strategy kicking ass or not? Um, and the other thing is we want to be able to get results back quickly. Uh, we don't want to have to wait uh, for, you know, 10 minutes for, uh, for a MapReduce to run. Uh, we want to be able to just interactively ask, ask questions about our data. Um, and, you know, as a SQL databases, traditional SQL databases, um, especially ones that let you do analytics, they don't scale out. Um, you know, they're, they're sort of, it's an open research problem and uh, to, make, to make normal SQL architectures uh, scale out. But as you've seen, you know, throughout some of these talks is, uh, is some of the traditional databases um, don't do well when you start adding, adding nodes. And, when, and some of the NoSQL databases, I mean, the, the NoSQL is you don't, get, you don't get SQL. You can't ask the same kind of SQL queries. Uh, you can't ask the same kind of questions you can um, from a traditional relational database. Um, you know, once you have big data, uh, doing, doing scans over all that data is going to, is going to take a long time. Uh, and we're, we want to... Uh, <laughs> We want, we want to be able to, to, to parallelize things. Um, so Google built a technology called Dremel, and it scales to thousands of nodes. The, um, the VP of infrastructure at Google uh, was recently quoted saying, you can, um, you can do non-trivial queries over a petabyte of data, and you can get results back in order 10 seconds. Um, the, 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 the particular clusters that, that, that we have um, provision for, for BigQuery are, are slightly smaller than that. If you need that kind of performance, uh, you know, we'd be happy to have you come talk to us and we'll, we'll build you that, that cluster. Um, but uh, just to give you an idea of how, how, fast, how fast it is, um, don't, you don't have to just take my word for it. Um, so this is, uh, this is a data set that we have that's every, uh, every page on Wikipedia, uh, every, um, every day, it records the number of the number of hits, the number of web hits that it, that it got. Uh, and so, what I want to do is I'm going to do a query. Um, how well can you see this? So, a query um, to find uh, which were the um, which were the pages that got the most that got the most hits that were in Spanish, um, and they had this they match this funky regular expression. Um, so, this is the kind of thing you just can't do on a on a on a relational database. Because um, you know you'd need an you'd need an index uh, of this data, and to, to be able to do a regular expression over over every single entry in that in that um, in that database would just be prohibitively expensive. And so we can we can do this. This is uh, this is a lot of data, um, and it's going to take uh, it's going to take a few seconds. Uh, and so by the way, this is this is the BigQuery web um, web UI which is the, our external version of, of Dremel that people can, um, that, that third-party customers, people like you hopefully can, uh, can, uh, can check out and, and try and, uh, and run over your data set. So, so this is uh, 22 seconds, and we just ran, over, ran this regular expression over, over 611 gigabytes of data. Um, so hopefully you find that fast. If you don't find that fast, then, um, then you have a different idea of, of fast. So, um, <laughs> Um, and a lot of people ask us, well, why don't you just use MapReduce? Um, you know, MapReduce is a fantastic technology. It's used uh, thousands of times a day at Google. 
uh, very, very, Google's a very heavily, heavy user of, of MapReduce. They, uh, um, they arguably invented it, um, uh, arguably discovered it, uh, or at least for, for uses in, in big data. And so I just want to talk about why MapReduce doesn't, doesn't work so well for these types of things. So in a MapReduce, you generally have a master that's, that's sort of kicked off to, to run whatever processing you're doing. And the master launches some, some mappers and um, allocates those mappers. Sometimes, you know, may even boot additional machines. Um, and then mappers will, will read the data from, read data from distributed storage, process that data, and write it back out. Um, there's a step that people don't usually talk about in MapReduce, um, and it's often the kicker because it's the slowest, which it's shuffle. So it's map shuffle reduce. And shuffle is how you know how to send the data to the, to the reducers. So it's essentially an on-disk sort. Um, and, uh, and finally, there's a reducer, which is going to compute the, the, final, the final outcome. Each of these things is going through, uh, through uh, distributed storage, which is essentially writing it, writing it out to, to disk. There's a couple of, you know, MapR has, a, has sort of an in-memory, uh, very high performance um, shuffle stage, but you know, it, essentially these are tweaks around the edges. Uh, you know, MapReduce is, is, is just designed for, um, for batch processing. And the next thing about, about MapReduce is that many of the interesting questions that you want to ask uh, can't be done in a single map and reduce phase. A map and reduce is, is pretty limited. And so you're often going to have to do multiple stages of these, of these map, maps and reduces. Um, so to compare the two, you know, MapReduce is for, essentially for batch processing, um, Dremel slash BigQuery, um, you know, it's, it's optimized, the architecture is optimized to, to get answers quickly uh, with low latency for, for SQL type queries. And I'll show a little bit about how that, how that works. Dremel is built as a, as a tree, tree structured. Um, at, at the bottom you have the same distributed storage level that you did in, in, uh, uh, in, for, for MapReduces, although it tends to be stored, the data tends to be stored in, in column format. And the column format is key because uh, you, know, you may have a very wide table, you may have a thousand columns in your table. If you're only doing a query over two columns, then you don't you don't need to read read everything. Um, it has um, um, the bottom of the tree is is leaves and leaves are sort of like the MapReduce workers, um, but it's a long it's a long lived tree, so you don't have to spin something up new uh, every time. Um, and the 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 connections between the leaves and the and the sort of the next higher nodes, which we call mixers, um, these are network very fast network connections. So you don't have to write things to disk. You're sort of doing the, the reducing and sorting by, a, a, by, by pre-assigning them to, to uh, the, the leaves to mixers. And if, um, if that's a little bit uh, hand wavy, um, I'm gonna go quickly into, into one uh, example of, of, a, um, of a Dremel query. So this, we have a, we have a public data set that uh, has every baby born in the United States for 50 years and uh, has a bunch of sort of demographic information about, about the, the baby and, and, the, and the, the parent, et cetera. And so this is, this is a query that will compute the, um, the years when the most, um, the most babies were born to mothers over 30. Um, and so we see the same, the same, Dremel, the same Dremel tree here. Um, and we'll start from the bottom, because the query is sort of rewritten as it goes down. and, um, and <coughs> Uh, usually, usually simplified. So at the very, the very base level, we're just going to um, take the mother age and year. So even though we have a lot of, a lot of uh, columns, we only need to read, read those, those two, and it's essentially just a SQL query um, into the leaves. Then the leaves compute, a, compute the count uh, themselves and, and the group by. And so since we have 50 years of, of data in this, in this data set, they're going to return essentially 50, 50, uh, 50 values um, back up the tree. So the mixer is going to um, uh, is going to continue to aggregate those. And notice it doesn't have to do the filtering anymore. You know where the mother age is greater than 30 because that's already already been done. Uh, and finally, the root the root of the tree is going to apply our limit query um, and uh, and uh, and also sort. We want to because we want to we want to find the ones that had the the highest number of uh, of babies in that year. So that's essentially how Dremel works. If anybody has any more questions about about specifics or things that I can 
you know, I, uh, I can tell you a lot about it because we published a paper on it, um, but I'd happy to talk, to talk afterwards. Um, so this is great, you know, BigQuery is something that we can use at, at Google, but hopefully you may want to know how can, how can you use BigQuery. Um, so it's just a, it's just a web API. Um, you can send, it's a RESTful API. RESTful is a, a buzzword for uh, being able to do simple HTTP operations on it. Um, you know, you can, uh, you know, use HTTP GET to read a table, HTTP POST to insert a, insert a query job or insert a load job. Um, and the way you generally get your data into BigQuery is you have your data in multiple pieces. It can be in CSV format and JSON format. You upload it into Google Cloud Storage, which has a very, very fat pipe from the, from the, uh, the internet. Um, and then you run an import job that'll run, um, that'll import it into to BigQuery. Uh, and what does this look like? Um, it's, a, it's a JSON post request to, to a BigQuery URL. Um, you can see the first part is just sort of the, the, uh, the BigQuery endpoint um, project. So every, everything in, in BigQuery, sort of the root of all namespaces are, are projects. And projects you might think of as your company, or maybe it's a sub-project within that company. Um, you know, say you're, doing, you're working on some, some project um, uh, and, and your, your, your namespace is, is sort of private within that, within that project. Um, but you can see that um, you give it the source URI where, where it came from, and you give it you know, the name of the table that you're creating and, 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 some, and the schema, some, some minor information. And, uh, and that's, all, that's all you need to do. And kind of to, to show what that looks like, um, so this is the, the Chrome developer console. You probably can't see the too well, I guess it's not so bad. Um, it's, uh, so everything that BigQuery UI does uh, actually goes through the public API. So you can, you can use the, the Chrome Developer Console to actually see what gets, what gets sent. And here we can see the request payload. Um, basically just sends the same, the same data that I, that, I, that, I, that I mentioned before, and this is creating a, a table named um, you know, foo.bar with some, with some simple, simple fields uh, that I imported from from a CSV file I had um, in my Google storage bucket. Okay, so running a query is actually very similar. Sim similar. Um, a, lo a load is a job, a load is a type of job, a query is also another type of job. And so you just, you give it a very similar um, payload, although obviously instead of specifying the schema and, um, and the, the Google storage location, you specify the, the query that you, that you want to actually run. If that seems a little bit confusing uh, or difficult, um, most people don't need to actually operate at that, at that wire level. Um, there's a bunch of, of uh, public, publicly available libraries for you know, virtually any language that you, you may want to be coding in. Um, that, that makes it easy to, to connect. I'll show an example of, so in, in JavaScript, um, you know, you, you basically just, uh, there's a query, query object and then a request object and you can, you can execute it. It's pretty, it's pretty straightforward, um, as straightforward as JavaScript can be. Um, so I wanted to do a, a, a couple of quick demos um, to kind of show, show BigQuery in use. And so the BigQuery team uses BigQuery a lot. Um, just to understand our to understand our service and to to debug our service, and so I thought this might be a good way to to show you. Okay, so we're actually we're running a production service, um, and how can BigQuery be be useful to to do that? Um, so what we do is we we load uh, see, we load the BigQuery jobs table uh, into uh, the BigQuery jobs database table into a BigQuery table uh, approximately every hour. So we snapshot it every hour. And, um, and you can see the schema here. And a lot of these schema fields are the exact same fields as you saw in, that, in, the, uh, in those, those job objects that I, was, that I was showing that are posted. So there's configuration query query. Um, and so this is a nested, uh, nested data structure. And so from this, we can run any BigQuery queries that we that we would want to do over that, and so one one thing that we often want to do is um, is de debug problems that people are having. And so the the BigQuery uh, help forum is on is on Stack Overflow, and sometimes people will ask us questions, and they'll only you don't need to read this. This is just sort of a um, 
is this, and, and someone was hitting an error, and the error indicated that it was unexpected error turn, translates into an internal error on our side. And often the information that people give us is not always enough to, to, to diagnose the problem easily. Maybe they'll send us their query, but it'll be only part of the query, or they'll send you know, a, re a re reduced query, and we want to see what they're, actually, what they're actually running. And so what we can do is, um, so I want to run a query over our jobs um, that, uh, that basically has this sort of, this phrase that I picked out of their, out of their query, um, which is probably right even, the, even if they didn't, um, even if they had redacted it a little bit. And I want to say that the, the result error was, you know, internal error, and I want to capture a bunch of a bunch of fields. So I can get the job with the job ID. I can look through our server logs. Um, the debug info captures our stack trace, and uh, I'm going to I truncate the stack the stack trace because because um, you know there's some things that we don't necessarily want to want to show, and we don't want to actually show our whole our whole stack trace. But you can you can see that um, so these queries are very fast. <laughs> Um, we call these sort of spear phishing. You know, you're looking for a particular particular thing, and you know you know some information, um, and you're looking for essentially one thing. So we, we've also ordered these by time. So um, so the most recent ones um, show up first, and we can we see that the, the debug info is you know unexpected Dremel error, um, and that, that that gives us sort of if I show the rest of that debug info, that that'll show a lot more information about about what actually happened, and you can also see the query that was run. Um, we can see, you know, we capture a bunch of a bunch of uh, interesting things. Um, so, in addition to spear phishing, there's often you just want to ask questions about the health of your data, the health of your service. Um, so sometimes we want to know uh, how long are these Dremel queries taking. And so there's a quanti So average is a bad is a bad number to use because average is very heavy, heavily dominated by large values. You know, if you uh, get 100 people in a room and one of those people is, is Bill Gates and you compute their average uh, net worth, then, um, then that's going to be a much higher number than, than possibly it, it, it should be. And so Big, BigQuery uh, has a quantiles function, which is essentially percentiles, or it enables you to, to compute. Like the median is the 50th percentile. Um, you can compute like the 90th percentile. And so we just want to see how long are these BigQuery queries taking. Um, uh, and you know, so what's the, what's the median, what's the 90th percentile? And so we can see that, okay, so 9% of them finish within, these are in milliseconds, so within 1.5 milliseconds. Um, and I've lost the edge of this. Come on. There we go. Um, so if I keep scrolling through, the 50th percentile, so half of the query is finished in less than 777 milliseconds, and um, previous. So the 90th percentile is, uh, you know, is on under 10 seconds. So 90% of queries finish in under under 10 seconds. Um, there's a lot more interesting things that we can do, of like counting users and counting jobs and counting revenue growth. Um, but you know, some of those are sensitive internal things. So I'd probably get in trouble if I started if I started showing those to you. Um, so you know, once you uh, once you're able to, 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 to get these answers, the next thing you might want to do is, uh, is figure out, you know, is, is actually visualize them or put them in a pretty chart that you can, that you can look at. So, um, you know, Google's got a, a charting API, and so actually in, in the BigQuery team, um, we, built a, uh, we built a dashboard, and this dashboard, um, this is a, a stripped down version of it, but it's, you know, it's just a simple app engine app that calls into, into BigQuery and hopefully we can get this to resize correctly. Um, and we add queries to this, to this dashboard that are, run, that are run periodically so we can see, um, so we, we, we can see this is the average import size. Um, 
so we can see you know, over time how does the, the number of files that people are using, the number of megabytes of, of, of their import, and average records, how do, those, how do those change? And if you look down here, we can actually see this is the actual BigQuery query that, that was run. Um, you could cut and paste this into the, into the BigQuery um, browser tool and, and, and run that to, to get that in um, or to, to tweak it. Um, this is, the, this is the query I just showed you, the, the query time quantiles, uh, percentiles. You can see how, um, how uh, non-linear non it is. There's, there's some, you know, some people run very, very complicated queries that are, that are very expensive, um, whereas most of them um, happen in, in under a second. Uh, and again, here's the, this is, this is the exact query I just, I just ran. Um, and so this this app engine uh, this app engine app is has been uh, released publicly uh, as a, as a public sample so people can could try it and and uh, and tweak it. Come on. Um, there are some other ways to use to use BigQuery. Um, so BigQuery via AppScript is uh, is integrated with Google Spreadsheets. Um, so I'm not going to show that here, but it's it's relatively straightforward. You just to uh, you just say you're gonna you want to use the BigQuery API and um, there's a there's a built-in editor that that has autocomplete and and um, and that enables you to, uh, to to write to write um, BigQuery queries and then you can you can use those to use Google spreadsheets to, to to graph although perhaps you know you're not you haven't totally drunk all the Google kool-aid and you want to use uh, Microsoft Excel um, there's also an Excel connector uh, that allow you to to run um, run bi BigQuery queries from within Excel and use Excel's graphing uh, mechanisms to to, uh, to understand that. Um, in addition, there's there's some third-party tools. Uh, uh, there's a French call company called um, Beam, and uh, and they do some really interesting um, interesting BigQuery visualizations. Um, the other one here is ClickView um, that uh, can show some other ways other ways of looking at your data. Uh, and finally, we just integrated, announced integration with Tableau, um, which is another data visualization um, company um, based out of Seattle. Um, so, here's to, to 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 wrap up. You know, Big BigQuery, um, and I, enables you to get get your results back in in seconds. It does full table scans over your data, so you can. Um, they figured out a way to make make a full table scan fast by by running it in parallel. Um, and so you can ask much more complex questions than you, than you would, uh, would be able to um, uh, as, as in addition to running aggregate queries. It's an API that's simple to use uh, and it's scale invariant. That's one of the last, the last point that I want to leave you, leave, leave you with is that if you're using BigQuery, you shouldn't necessarily need to worry about, well, is my data big or how, is my data big enough to use BigQuery? Is my data too big to use BigQuery? Um, you, can run, you can run queries over... 10 row tables, you can run queries over, over a trillion row tables, and it's just the same, it's the same architecture. Um, if you use, you know, 10 row tables, it's likely going to be less expensive, um, but, um, but it should just, just continue to work, and the costs scale proportionally um, to, the, to the size of the data that you're, you're using. Um, so, thanks, thanks very much. Um, and I'm happy to answer any, any questions that, that, that people have. Uh, yes, you in the end. Yep, that's you in the striped shirt. when you use a cloud uh, service is how to upload the data. Imagine that you have several terabytes or whatever of data in your services. How does how that can be done uh, to upload to, to, to Google? That's the scale. Um, so the, the, that's a great question. You know, how do we how do you get the data in, uh, especially if you have ter terabytes of data? Uh, and the the thing is, usually when you have terabytes of data, you didn't get terabytes of data all at once. It's often that the, that you're that you're bringing in smaller pieces of data every day. Um, uh, and and your you know data grows over time, so you can run you can run appends to the same table um, as you're as you're getting as you're getting the data in. You know maybe you're doing you know a gigabyte a day, ten gigabytes a day. Um, you can you can break that up into pieces and, and upload it upload it to Google, 
And also, if you know, if you've got, a, I mean, so the the Wikimedia uh, example um, that was thir so of, of all, all the tables that we have, that was it's over three terabytes, and that took 37 minutes to, to import in, in, into BigQuery. So if you, it can be a pain to upload it in, into Google Stores, but once you once you've done that. Um, you know, uh, and you, you can do that in parallel. You can do that, um, uh, you know, via a number a number of mechanisms. But once you do that, it's it's you know, getting it into to BigQuery can be um, uh, is, is 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 has been uh, heavily optimized. You can also compress the files, um, which which should give you a little bit of, a little bit more bandwidth bandwidth improvement. We do realize that it's you know it's um, for very large data data systems. It's 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 a tough tough question. And um, and it's but it's also one that we're working on on um, on improving. I mean, so Google Compute Engine will be should be available pretty soon. If you're generating your data via you know a Hadoop job into Google Compute Engine, um, you know we'll have fast pipes to get that into to BigQuery. Um, you know, if you're running in Amazon's cloud, you should be able to 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 post it still to uh, to Google Cloud Storage. Any other questions? Yes. Oh. Sorry, I really have a question. Okay, sure. <coughs> um, so since you don't have a microphone, do you want to just uh, ask and I'll repeat your question? Yeah, yeah, if you can repeat it. So the question, I, I read the drama paper when it was published. I was really impressed and I think it's a really exciting tool. So that's why I was also really excited when uh, a few weeks back uh, Cloudera published their, their project called Impal. I don't know if you have had the time to, to revise it. And if so, then my question is, how, how does it compare to, to BigQuery and if you have any visibility? I'm actually not not as familiar with with uh, with Impala. Um, I th I think there's there's significant differences. Um, there's also a an open source uh, project that's part of a it's an Apache incubator project um, called Drill that's attempt that's trying to to sort of replicate the uh, the the Dremel paper, um, but that's still in in its infancy. Uh, they and they don't don't yet have a, a working version yet. I'm sorry, I, I don't I don't know more about uh, Impala. Cool. Sure. <laughs> Yes, one in the back. Yeah. Uh, what do you think is the best combination uh, for this technology? To combine this with a business intelligence uh, classical approach or with a big data uh, Hadoop approach? And how does it coexist with a Hadoop project with a Storm and all these elements? What is the intersections and the value that each other gives to the other part? Um, so that, that's that's a good question. I think it's um, if you if you're using if you're using Hadoop and you're storing your data in, in Hadoop Hadoop FS or HDFS, um, it, you know you, you do have to run an export export mechanism to get it into to BigQuery, and so it's a non it's non trivial um, to. Uh, to, to integrate, I mean, that said, if you if you are you know using Hadoop, you should be able to, as your sort of final reduce in your, in, your, in a reduced step, um, write write your data to the to, to BigQuery um, uh, table. So I um, I guess the the it's a weaselly answer. The the integration right now is not is not great, uh, and that's something but that's something we're actively actively working on. We want to. Uh, we know that that, it, that data analysis is only one portion of the big data story, and and that what we need to do is we need to have a, a wider uh, wider offering. That's all I can tell you tell you now. But um, anything else? Any more questions? Yeah, I have one. Okay. Yeah, is there any way to use uh, BigQuery against your data store? For example, if you have application in Yes. So the um, so the question was: Is there a way to, uh, to to query over your data that's in App Engine Data Store? And so App Engine. Um, so we just worked with App Engine to um, uh, they released a beta beta um, backup version. So you you um, via App Engine you you can you can you can say you want to backup your data to a BigQuery table um, that triggers a BigQuery import job. And then you can run um, you can run queries queries over that. So that happens all sort of internally with Google, and it's very uh, it's 
very easy to use. Uh, you can, if you, you know, search for that. You, it's, I think it's a public beta that you can sign up, sign up for, if you're interested. Anything else? Thank you very much, John. Thank you.